Um, maybe um, he wants to contest the D file. Perhaps he can uh, contest the D file what with uh, bringing a rook, uh, perhaps a C rook, into um, onto D1. But uh, he has certain tactical problems. Actually, Black has nicely positioned. Uh, he has a very nicely positioned rook, and his queen is actually also very uh, well placed on a5. It's defending his own king side, and also threatening this pawn down on a2. So um, Kasparov is going to have to watch that. Uh, I. <laughs> I don't think he's happy. I really don't think he's happy. He can even lose the game if he's not careful here. I don't want to become melodramatic. Um, but such things sometimes happen in, in Simmels. You, you, ha you know, he had the advantage earlier and he doesn't want to let it go. Um, he wants to press for a win, but it may be this is a position where he has to be circumspect. He has to somehow, I don't know, rook c2, rook c2, just, that's a passive move. I'm, I don't like that move at all. But, you know, sometimes you have to play some, some stupid moves like that. You can't always go forwards just because... Uh, um, you want to. Sometimes the position demands something else. He's advanced. Yeah, actually, this is an aggressive move. He cuts the um, communication. Um, okay, we're now moved on to some other games. This, unfortunately, there's not too much to be said. Uh, Mark Dillon is material down. And... Um, he has no counterplay whatsoever. So that's, uh, and I think our well, president has um, resigned, looks like it. Didn't play badly. Didn't play badly at all. A little bit, um, um, I think, greed got the better of him, actually, at the critical moment when he had to... Um, defend um, he went on a on an excursion which was uh, most unwise so this looks like the the final is that the final move queen g5 check and mate next move so um, Chris Peters resigned Leonard Leonard's ag again has played a good move I mean Actually, somebody ought to teach this boy some, some openings. That's really his main problem. He's not a bad player at all, by any stretch of the imagination. But um, his, his opening knowledge is a bit is deficient. Is that another one down? No, that's Jan Kalavart. His yeah didn't have the best of days uh, today. Yeah, as you can see, that that is gruesome. It's a sort of video nasty, really. X-rated stuff. Shouldn't be showing this to children. fight. Oh, very, very interesting indeed. And wisely, in my opinion, Chris Lankreet has decided that, okay, he's saying, I'm not going to um, grab a pawn, I'm going to go on a counter-attack here. I actually think 
Gary should drop his maybe he should drop his queen back to to f2 that's probably the best move but it looks as if black is still okay black is uh, rook d8 he can then double triple his major pieces on the on the d file Th that's very sensible he's he's just d disdained uh, the capture of this pawn, putting his queen out of the game. And he's gone in, attacking the bishop. Maybe, very often actually, he's going to put this um, this queen even on e3 with check. Um, and possibly another idea is that sometimes, um, yeah, he might want just to... Uh, uh, he could even play e5 sometimes. But the the point was, if we go back one move, uh, we realize that um, Gary Kasparov cut the action of the Black Queen. He cut the protection along the, the fifth rank. The Queen was protecting the pawn on h5. And by cutting this uh, action here, uh, he was preparing an attack. So Chris Lankreet's move is, is very clever because he brings in his, qu his queen as a, as a counter-attack and he's also coordinating very well uh, and potentially this, this queen can also sometimes uh, nip back to the defence of his own king, should it be needed, with the queen in some variations could come back even to h6. There are, um, it's back along the diagonal, there are ideas here, I mean I'll just give you some slightly nonsensical idea, but I mean just just suppose why were to sacrifice on, on h5. It's not a good move. I just want to illustrate some some points. Black would recapture that uh, the queen would say okay king g7 now and let's say white were to advance with f5. Well there are actually different um, possibilities of dealing with this but then we see the point of the the um, uh, black queen being in a in a good position. He can come back to perhaps g5 uh, to defend um, uh, his own king. Because uh, yeah, queen g6 check is, a, is some sort of a threat. So so that would be covering that square, threatening to exchange queens, and of course. Um, He's a uh, he would be material up, so Gary's uh, sort of knockout punches uh, are just not going to work here. He's gonna if he's gonna find something, it's got to be a lot more sophisticated than that. Let's examine something else. Let's suppose that Kasparov puts his bishop on c4. Let's say he, his bishop is under attack. Let's just move it out of the way. Now, I think, um, black will play e5. And after e5, he attacks the f4 pawn. And uh, Kasparov would like to capture on e5, but he cannot capture on e5 because uh, his queen is under attack, so he he would be pinned there. And this e5 move would be a very, very liberating move for, for black. He's threatening to capture a pawn, uh, intending to bring his bishop into the game, and uh, actually um, uh, he would be in a dominating position there. Uh, Kasparov would be under pressure if that were to happen. Okay, fair 